it was a like a sidewalk feature you had microphones and stuff like that uh, so I, I didn't quite understand what the, the setting was but <clears throat> nonetheless there was this guy preaching the gospel basically trying to get people to come over to Christianity because if they don't they're going to hell and he was talking about how hell was a miserable place and that there is uh, unending suffering and you know you get the idea and this one one of the audience members uh, she was a Christian and she she was telling him it's like I don't think you're going about it the right way I don't you know you're, you're preaching doom and gloom but that's not what Christianity is about and you know the preacher he was a pro he had the answers for every one of her concerns every one of her comments he's like well you know if there was somebody in a fire wouldn't you want to go rescue them he says yes but you know I that's that is a little bit different you know those people are in imminent danger and you know he was like well you know you could die tomorrow so you are in imminent danger so it, it was it was an interesting exchange but uh, I, I tend to kind of agree with her in that what the preacher said was I could see his point of view it was it was technically correct you know I could die right now <laughs> uh, recording this uh, this video and a big truck or something will run into me and, and if I haven't accepted Christ then there is a real risk that that I will go to hell or purgatory or Hades or whatever you want to call it um, but you know here here's what kind of gets me uh, on on that type of cell or hard cell uh, to bring anybody to anything whether it be Christianity or trying to get them to buy a product right because that's what that's what basically uh, people are doing when they're we're, they're trying to convince others their friends to come over to Christianity and and the approach of doom and gloom and fear and well if you don't you're going to hell I, eh, it's 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 a hard reality true some people need hard realities uh, it's just not so, you know, there, like I said there's a balance you, you do you do need that message but if it's your only message then that's a problem right for example uh, if, if you are a person who believes in aliens not saying I don't not saying I do <laughs> And it, it would be, you know, trying to get <clears throat> uh, people to believe in Christ uh, to, to, to people who don't believe in Christ or, or uh, are kind of on the fence about it. But you're going about it by telling them, oh, if you don't, you're going to hell. It would be, to me, uh, akin to telling somebody who doesn't believe in aliens, oh, well, uh, you know, uh, when the aliens come and you don't. Yeah, and, and you don't believe in aliens, you're not going to be prepared, and, uh, uh, and and they're going to catch you, and they're going to probe you, and if you're not prepared for that, get your tinfoil hat and underwear on, uh, uh, you're going to get probed. <laughs> yeah. you know, how's that sound? You know, that, that to me, that would be a, very similar to somebody talking, uh, you know, fire and brimstone to you, if you one, if you, you're you're not a religious person or or, or a Christian. Uh, to me, the my approach, I wouldn't say the better approach, my approach is to maybe ask the person how have they seen miracles or things that, that shouldn't have happened but did happen in a good way work in their lives. Um, and, and I try to live my life as an example. It's a, it's a, it's a longer approach. Um, but to me, I, I think it's, it, it, it sticks, it sticks better, and it has, uh, you know, it, uh, <laughs> where I work, there, there are two aspects to what I do. There, there's the spirit of the law, and there's the letter of the law. 
right? So the letter of the law says, you must believe or you will die and go to hell. But the spirit of the law really is that, um, it, to me, to me, to me, to me, is trying to get you to be a righteous person or as righteous a person as possible uh, given given human nature and the world we live in and and the influences that that we're up against so the 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 guiding approach or the coaching approach is more long lasting and more genuine than oh my gosh i better believe or else i'm going to I'm gonna go to hell. I'm gonna get probed by aliens. <laughs> because when I read the Bible, uh, there's a lot of good information in there. Uh, personally, I, I I can't get my head around all of it, and and that's the honest truth. One, because I wasn't there. I'm going on. Think about this. Even as a Christian, as a devout Christian, think about it. Chances are you weren't there when, when it happened. You don't know the motivations of the people who wrote the book. I don't even really know who wrote the Bible or certain aspects of the Bible. Um, it's been translated throughout the years. And uh, just today, in today's society... Trans, translating from even English to Spanish, there are opportunities to lose things in translation. So back up 2,000 years ago, and consider whoever wrote it originally, uh, I guess it was in Greek or Hebrew, and it was translated by, uh, and it, here's my limited understanding. Uh, and, and this is what I love about YouTube. If, if you know better, or if you know the, uh, 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 I wouldn't say better, but a more detailed uh, account of how the sequence of events happens, um, my understanding is that in a, in a kindergarten <laughs> explanation, uh, the Bible was written by person A. <clears throat> It gets put away in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and person B finds it and gives it to person C, who translated it, and even persons uh, D, E, and F translate it. And then that was in ye olde English. <clears throat> and then now you have person G, H, and I who translated into the Living Bible, the New uh, International Version, the whatever version. So there's, it, it's been changed. The hands of, of this information have, have transpired through many hands, many iterations. Um, and, and it comes to us in modern civilization, uh, anyway, in, in relative terms. <clears throat> and we're supposed to believe what this book says. Now, you can argue that, well, it had the hand of God, so the gist of the information should be intact, right? Should, should be. Uh, but there are many, many, many sermons, many accounts of the same Bible passage uh, that I've heard <clears throat> that have different explanations. So if it was the hand of God, you would think it would have the same uh, uh, translation or the same uh, story or background that goes with it. <clears throat> uh, now, mind you, they, they, they are similar. The explanations are similar. Uh, but not... <laughs> I wouldn't say not exactly the same. So one, I wasn't there when all this transpired. I wasn't there when the first person A wrote the story down, or multiple persons A's. Uh, so that, you know, that in and of itself is 
you have to take the information with a grain of salt. And two, uh, you, let's say this person wrote down exact accounts. He followed the Jesus around, or or you know Moses around, and wrote all this stuff <clears throat> uh, as accurately as they could. Right, just kind of following around with a with a scroll and a, and a quill, and <laughs> and documented everything. But it was based on the context of their understanding of technology back then. Um, you know, they didn't even know about germs back then, right? So there's a lot of things that technologically they weren't aware of, but they wrote things down as they understood it. So then now we're trying to understand what they wrote in the context of today. Um, so that's a problem. Okay. And then third, the third thing that, that I can't really get my head around is that even today when you hear a news report or a news account of uh, anything, anything that happened, uh, if you were actually there you would say it didn't happen like that, right? And, and this is instant information, or as instant as you can get it. And they still can't get it right. So now you're expecting some dude two thousand years ago, thereabouts, to to wait till he can get to his papyrus and ink and and quill to document things accurately. Um. Uh, so that 2,000 years later, people can look back and say, oh, that's what happened on that day. Uh, <laughs> I find that a stretch. Now, trust me, I, <clears throat> I'm not saying that not to not believe it, uh, but I'm just saying it, it, for non-believers, as I was, it was, a hard, it was a hard sell. It was hard to, to get my head around. It was hard to... to trust and have faith that this information was true now where I'm at in my spiritual journey I look at the Bible as as somebody would look at a huge mural painting right I just kind of take it all in and and get kind of a a feel for the message that that big mural is trying to tell me I don't look at every single dot and detail and say oh well this painting is about this as it relates to this two square inches or one square inch of, of paint. Um, so I try to look at the big broad overall picture of what the Bible is trying to tell me. Uh, and, and there are little bits and, and pieces of details that, that I do kind of hone into because they do kind of accentuate the theme of what the Bible is trying to tell me. Um, <clears throat> but it, it's, it's just hard to uh, base what the teachings are on one or two passages. You know, when people want to argue certain things, yeah, I'll pick out bits and pieces to where people say, well, the Bible says this. And so I counter, well, it also says this. So, you know, if, if you're going to pick on that one piece, um, then how do, you, how do you answer this one piece, which seems to counteract what you're interpreting this part of the Bible as saying. So, in the end, to me, the hard sell, you know, the fire and brimstone, and, and if you don't believe, you're going to die and go to hell. Um, it's all part of the message. It, it's all part of the message, and people do need to hear that. But to try to get people... To believe, uh, I, I don't think is a is, is as effective as giving testimony on how on the positives and, and how that's worked in my life. And, and, and I guess going back to you know, even though I don't necessarily believe or trust that. Uh, everything in the Bible that's written in the Bible is is a hundred percent true account um, I 
what what brought me to believing is I made a video about that is connecting the dots throughout my life where where Christ has been present or um, people who have been affected by Christ have been present in my life and how that's worked in, in my life that have convinced me not the Bible uh, that Christ exists and that Christ does work through me and in me uh, so to me the Bible is a good kind of reference manual <clears throat> uh, but it's not uh, I, I wouldn't say that it's the primary go-to item uh, that that helped convert me into being a believer. Um, so it, it, that's not to say that it isn't important, uh, but the influences that, that brought me to Christ were not, uh, to me, directly tied to the Bible until after I became a believer. So... Uh, take that with a grain of salt when, <clears throat> if your goal, again, all our journeys are different and all our callings are different. So if your goal, to me, uh, my opinion, is if your goal is to convert people, and, and I'll talk that about this in a different video, uh, about the Great Commission. Uh, if you follow the Great Commission literally and make apostle of all the world, uh, there will be people who respond to fire and brimstone, and there will be people who respond to uh, positive testimony. <clears throat> so don't limit yourself to just fire and brimstone, I guess. It's a long-winded uh, way of saying that. Uh, and, uh, well, good luck and God bless. Take care. Bye.